Okay, welcome back. It is uh, 8 6 of 2015. We're going to take a look at the fourth syllogism or the fourth triad for Aristotle as presented by Brentano um, from uh, Florence, Italy, where uh, his wife Emily was transcribing his essays. But we have uh, progressed to the fourth syllogism, and it's going to consist of a uh, Timion, Dunamis, and Sophia. So it's going to be a, I'm picking up with that uh, first principle of uh, the prime mover or uh, the pure actuality of thought. But this time we're going to um, proceed through Dunamis, power, and then we're going to reach uh, Sophia, wisdom. So we begin with the Timion and the, the divine intellect as the first principle is a pure actuality of thought and it is its own object. And uh, Brentano tells us that Aristotle did not conceive of an evil principle that opposed this first principle. An evil principle uh, did not exist for Aristotle. Therefore reality equals God plus a world ordered with infinite wisdom. So it's a God and an ordered world equals reality. And it's only when actuality is considered as a separate portion of reality that we uh, perceive, uh, falsely perceive um, imperfection. But it's only when we don't look at the holistic view and we break it up into parts. Because the world as a holistic entity is a good organism. Now the complete knowledge of deity equals uh, the fact that the divine intellect is the first principle of all things and the divine intellect is the perfect order of all things. And this attains <clears throat> what Aristotle called Timion Gnosis or the most noble, the most prestigious knowledge is realized in this uh, complete knowledge or complete realization of an understanding of the true deity. But this deity, uh, this uh, perfect, um, pure actuality of thought, does go out of itself in a dunamis power. And so in the second moment, we're going to look at uh, the divine intellect as the theoretical, ideal, active principle. And uh, you've got to key in on theoretical there, because uh, that's what uh, Brentano says Aristotle does. In the second moment, even in sensate reality, the theoretical is always emphasized by Aristotle. So uh, in the second moment, the divine intellect is the theoretical, ideal, active principle. In the historical realm, the perfect Timion Gnosis of the divine intellect functions as Theos Dunamis Ergon, and that's Aristotle's term, Theos Dunamis Ergon, or divine potential working power. And the four fundamental aspects of this active principle are uh, primarily <clears throat> it is not the production of a property to possess. And rather it is uh, the ideal theoretical knowledge and the pleasure that is associated with this ideal theoret theoretical knowledge. It's a teleology of ideality. It's that uh, backdrop sui generis of universality as a teleology of ideality that exists in our sensate reality. There is a backdrop of a teleology of ideality. And that is coupled with that uh, synonymy that we discussed, which is now a dunamis synonymy power. And like I said, the theoretical is given priority over the practical by Aristotle, even in the sensate realm of this second moment, which is the psychical realm for Brentano. But that does allow us to reach Sophia, the moment of return. So in Sophia, we have the self-knowing return through the realization of the notion of the true. The divine intellect is the first and the total principle of being. The divine intellect gives through that synonymy, but it does not receive. And according to um, Brentano's interpretation of Aristotle, return unto the divine intellect includes knowledge and bliss, both knowledge and bliss, knowledge and joy. It includes Sophia, 
the world is known through the divine self-knowing, and bliss, pleasure, is acquired through the self-consciousness of the divine intellect. And that presupposes, of course, we already discussed it last time, but it presupposes a subject agent that can achieve self-consciousness. So the content of that which is taken pleasure in equals the real of the divine intellect free will or the notion of the true of a subject agent, the notion of the true. It becomes that uh, eternal striving, that notion of the true. Therefore, the notion of the true can be represented as, from the point of view of a subject agent that is uh, seeking to achieve universality, it becomes the three moments of particularity, individuality, and universality. Now, under uh, particularity, it's the Greek concept of phronesis, or that uh, our intentionality that we take to the Dakunta threshold of dialogue, that uh, where we're seeking Sophia wisdom, but we have basically our own um, particular model to posit, and we seek to refine it to universality. And then we move through individuality, which is our praxis positing of our true teleosis sign model of causality that we discussed. The positing of our sign model of causality. And then we reach the universality of Sophia as the return of our positive teleosis as a qualifying universality of recognition by others. So the third moment is that uh, recognition moment. So this fourth uh, syllogism uh, does build on our previous syllogism. Uh, we closed with that uh, pure contemplation of deity, and now we open with the timion, um, uh, the pure actuality of the uh, divine intellect. But there is no evil principle, so uh, the first principle of the divine is going to um, evolve through that synonymy process, and that synonymy process is a true dunamis power of potentiality that will actualize itself in reality as a uh, teleology of ideality. The ideal gets emphasized over the practical, so the sensate realm that we live in, the sensate world, has a backdrop of spirit. There is a realm of spirit that we can perceive if we view with the vision of one who perceives spirit. And if we do, then we can see that teleology of ideality. And it is a dunamis power. Now in the Greek, dunamis is always the power as potential, and energia is power as actual. So you can see that uh, the potentiality or the ideality is being emphasized here by Aristotle because he uses dunamis rather than energia. It's the dunamis, the ideal as a potentiality backdrop of a teleology that we are going to participate in through our positing of a teleosis of a sign model of causality. But our sign model of causality will help to actualize and bring forth dunamis as energia. But uh, in this particular fourth syllogism, it's the dunamis potentiality of the ideal that is being emphasized, and not the practical, but the ideal dunamis potentiality. And then we reach that return of Sophia, but return is always going to involve the self-conscious positing and receiving of return of a subject, agent, that begins with a phonetic stance at the Dakunta threshold, and posits an individual teleosis sign model, and then um, internalizes the return of that teleosis in um, intersubjective recognition, and then uh, works on qualifying universality, that, uh, that realm of uh, the universal concepts that we continually revise. So we've uh, moved on. Uh, up through almost uh, page 100 now in the volume, but uh, Brentano has been very, very, very systematic in working from uh, first syllogism to second syllogism to third syllogism to fourth syllogism and giving us a very systematic 
breakdown of Aristotle's philosophy and his Aristotle's theology, really, because he's taken a theological approach here. But uh, it's one syllogism being built on another, so I love the approach. But this time we finally uh, wrap up with the uh, particularity, individuality, universality triad for the agent subject in that uh, work of working toward achieving universality. It's all about achieving universality for Brentano and, and his interpretation of Aristotle. We always work on uh, trying to attain and define universal concepts. We never can get a perfect correspondence. We can't perfectly apprehend divine intellect, but we can um, approximate it and get close with our conceptual universal definitions. So we seek universality, but it's always, uh, from the last lesson, it's always an eternal striving. It's always a striving toward universality that never quite reaches certainty, but always posits probability. So we've got another uh, great syllogism, the fourth syllogism, of uh, Timion, Dunamis, and Sophia. And that takes us up uh, through to about page 100.